Thank you so much. Um, it's such an honor to be here amongst the artists and for such a great event, historic event. I'm going to just share with you some of my photographs. Um, it's very difficult for me to talk about my work um, and the meaning of my work. It, it began as an outlet or a replacement for verbal communication, and um, I use photography as a means to interpret moments. Um, this is the image that is displayed. It's titled, I Look Just Like My Daddy. It was shot on a rooftop in Williamsburg in 2004 um, of a subject. Uh, she goes by the name Macaulay. Um, photography is something which at its very best is immediate, seemingly unpredictable, and inspiring. I respect and admire photographers who are more controlled in their picture taking. Um, this, though, is contradictory to my process. Um, can you hear it in my voice? <laughs> Yikes. Um, I've been investigating a female experience um, that reflects my own. Um, I sort of look at the process of picture making as a form of psychoanalysis or a string of Freudian slips. Um, I have to relinquish control and just respond. And in that process, if lucky, I discover these fundamental and insignificant moments which initially seem um, arbitrary and inconsequential. Um, this is a image taken from a story that um, was published in a fashion magazine. I approached the editor with, um, with the goal of, I guess, uh, publishing a story. And the, the means for that to happen is I pitched it as a fashion story. So I was able to um, cast these band of characters and um, kind of use a mainstream commercial medium to get my images out there. This is Isabel. Um, unlike most of the subjects that I photograph, she actually approached me and, and requested that I photograph her. And uh, she sent me pictures of herself. And I was very inspired by her. So it was a wonderful experience. Um, these next two pictures were shot at a 4th of July party. Kate Hardy is an artist. She's the woman on the right. She has this annual mud wrestling party. And it's on 4th of July because she believes it's a dirty holiday. This uh, next picture titled Twins is part of a, a different series titled it's the Immaculate series. And um, I sought out female-headed families. And then it actually broadened to just um, single-sex-headed fam single sex families. Um, this is my favorite picture of the, of the series, because it really um, addresses the ideal of um, acceptable public behavior for women and what's deemed appropriate for um, public space versus private space and what's uh, considered appropriate. Um, through, this, through, the, through this experience of photographing these, these families, I um, was really discovering how creative the process it is for um, these families and how there's such a lack of a uh, model, a family model for, for these um, individuals or these families. So um, it really became quite apparent to me how, how narrow um, our definition of family is. Um, interesting, this family, which is they uh, used the brother-in-law's sperm 
um, which initially would seem quite complicated. Um, but this family was so incredible and inspiring. I had such a great time with them. And the uncle slash biological father um, lived on the block over. So they were just really close and he had his biological children or his actual children and they, they uh, visited while I was there and it just was quite amazing. And the, the son that's being held up in the back, he was very verbal on how to him it wasn't confusing at all. So this um, finally is a series called JD's Lesbian Utopia. And um, it started in New York and we traveled from New York to Los Angeles through the South visiting gay and lesbian RV camps. Um, I was invited to accompany JD and we invited a few friends. Um, JD's the woman in the red shirt and she began as the hero of this project. And um, it evolved into somewhat, um, JD, it, her, her um, excuse me, her, her role in the project, it kind of um, evaporated. So she really just became um, a symbol of freedom and self-definition and with um, we were able to, there's such a, a difference between um, just the other parts of the country that I've I've experienced and I grew up in Los Angeles and I moved to New York so it's um, quite extreme and you know there were the five of us kind of penetrating these these environments and and it was really um, obvious to us the impact that we were making in these environments and how we were being um, perceived Um, in this particular project, the RV contained our world, and um, this world was defined by us. And it was interesting because we, although it was, it was just us, it was still not free of the sexual and gender politics that exist in the mainstream world. Um, That's it. On my way here, my girlfriend, um, she showed me the New York Times article. I don't know if any of you have read it yet, but it's pretty funny. Because this morning, I was listening to NPR, and there was um, a segment on Judy Chicago and how her work was received 30 years ago. And the New York Times wrote a piece on how it was obscene and it was not art. And then <laughs> it was detailed too, I'm being brief. And then 30 years ago, which takes us today, there's a new New York Times article referring to this body of work <coughs> as non-art. And that feminism is, although a movement, it is not a, it, it's not a body, or it's not a move, an art movement. And, um, and they, were, they referred to Judy Chicago this time as the only jewel in the crown. <laughs> and it's, it's just um, reaff reaffirming how 30 years later the um, backlash is just as strong and it's rooted in just as much judgment and subjugation. So I think that's all I have to say, if there's any questions. Yeah. <laughs> 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 if you um, finish a little early, maybe we can just take a couple questions. Yeah, great. Is that all right? Yes. Um, so if you have a question, just raise your hand and we'll put it in the group. Yes. So Lesbian RV or you went to specific gay and lesbian RV places 
full. Wow. Yeah. Yes. I mean, <laughs> it's amazing when the when we first started discussing this project and what it was going to look like. Um, JD was like, "We're going to go to gay and lesbian RV camps," and the rest of us were like, "Really? There are so, and there are so many, and they're all over the country, and internationally there are so many." So, I mean, our RV was a self-contained <coughs> lesbian traveling kind of um, utopia or community. And then we would um, infiltrate these communities. And we, there was such, you know, through this experience, we learned that socially there's such a huge difference between the gay RV camps and the lesbian RV camps and the segregation that exists that was so profound and it really quite um, mimicked the segregation that exists on a larger form and the, the prejudice that exists. So unfortunately, um, it was quite illuminating to find out that we, are, we, we possess all of the um, judgment and fear that exists on a larger scale, so. Did you go both ways? No, we started in, in New York and we, oh. oh. Yeah, it's not that they weren't friendly. I think that people in all communities and all races really um, are protective of their space. And we really want to create um, a sacred space so we have the liberties and freedoms to express ourselves and not feel the gaze of another culture or race or sexual identity. So I think that's the core of it. It's our own um, fear of being, I mean, I can't speak for everyone, but I know for myself when I'm in um, a, a, a space that is designated just for women, it has such a different charge than a co-ed space and it really enables uh, me to express myself more freely. I mean, maybe, maybe I misunderstood, but I thought you were saying that the, the RV camps that were for men, mm -hmm. gay men, kind of seg were segregated from the gay women. And it's true. It's a, I mean, it's true. Anim I mean, I, I don't know. I mean, animosity, I'm sure, in some respect. But it, I know that there are, um, when we got to a gay male campground, um, you know, we were brought in and we were told, like, this is really a male campground and they're tolerating us being there and we're, in, we're welcome to be there, but um, a lot of people have issues about mixing. And so it, um, and I, you know, I went to a, I went to a single sex college and I, I understand where that comes from. You know, I could, I have that um, appreciation for a space being designated for women or a space being designated for men. And it, and unfortunately, you want to believe that all gay people are you know, united, but um, there's, a, there's a, a fundamental difference on how we, you know, spend our extracurricular time. Awesome. Anyone else? No more questions. Yes. I think it's recreational vehicles. Yeah. It's um. This is the inside of the RV. That's the the back end. It's like a 33 foot massive gas guzzling. <laughs> Oh, yeah. I mean, I, it's embarrassing how much gas we went through. And yes, Mom, do you have a question? <laughs> hey, I was going to say, how proud are you? Oh, thank you. <laughs> That's not a question with me. <laughs> uh, thanks so much.